Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. Now, if you watched the last episode, and I hope you did, I talked about GCC's support for the function attribute syntax from C++ 14 and 17 that allows us to say, I want to use this function attribute, such as always in line, and get some specific behavior from the compiler and be able to do this in a portable way, or at least mostly portable way, if your compiler supports that specific thing. Now, there are many different function attributes in here, and some of them are kind of goofy. I mean, you've got constructors and destructors that you can add to C, and it doesn't even make sense, but that exists. We've got warning and error attributes, that's all cool, but there's one here that I wanted to call out and show the power of it. I want to call attention to the pure function attribute here, and this let us specify that the function has no external side effects. And there is also another one called const, and that has to do with saying that this function doesn't rely on any global values or anything like that. And it can allow GCC to emit more efficient code for some calls to the function. So we're going to play with this const and pure and see what the power is of them. And this isn't const like in the C++ member function const kind of sense. This is different. This is saying I don't work with any global data or any global state of the system at all. So I'm going to start by making this simple just square function. And I'm not going to define it intentionally. Now let's go ahead and add also GCC and Clang here so we can see how and if they differ in their handling of this code. So we've got GCC and Clang, and we're going to put them both on full O3 optimization level. So this is our general function here. Now, the compiler has no way of knowing what this function does, and that's intentional. I intentionally am not giving it a body here, otherwise it could optimize this far too much for the sake of this example. But it's calling this function square, saving that value into R4, and then calling the function square again, and it's adding the results of these things together, arg4 and arg0. Yeah, that's right. And then it, because it has no way of knowing, like the square function could be something like it simply has no way of knowing. So we're going to take it back to this so that it doesn't know. Now, using this function attribute syntax that GCC supports, we can say this is a pure function and it only relies on the values that have been passed to it. And we can see immediately right here that it's able to take this knowledge, execute the square function once, because this is argc here, and then do a logical shift left by one. That means it's going to multiply it by two, so it gets the value that was from square, multiplies it by two, returns that out of main. That's pretty cool. Now, I don't expect that we're going to see much difference with the const version. No, for this code, it seems to stay the same. But they are both different tools that we can use to communicate with the compiler. Hey, by the way, these functions don't do anything with global state. You can optimize them in a better way, even if you can't inline them. So hopefully, something like this will actually get implemented in the standard, and we'll have yet one more way to communicate to the compiler and to the readers of our code what the nature is of the functions that we are writing, whether or not they use global state, whether or not they're pure functions, and give us all a little bit more information when we're reading our code and when the compiler is attempting to optimize it. So thanks again for watching C++ Weekly, and I hope you enjoyed this episode.